Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Well, Bitcoin just reached a new milestone up to $51,300 per BTC right now. Everybody in crypto is going crazy um, because, you know, this just means that uh, there is more movement to be had for the entire crypto space. This bull run is not done yet. So let me just put this on the hourly uh, to show you guys where we are now. Actually, let's see if we put it on the 30 minute uh, to give you guys a sense. We just hit it recently here. So $51,300. Bitcoin went up as high as $51,700. Uh, so this happened within the last uh, couple of hours or so. Uh, a new milestone for Bitcoin. It is bringing the price of XRP up uh, a little bit. Okay, XRP hovering at about 0.538. Uh, I know there are a lot of disappointed people when uh, XRP was coming back down here to the 48 cent level. We're going to talk about XRP in a second. I just wanted to bring up uh, this article here from XRP Crypto Wolf uh, with regards to the St. Louis Fed president talking about Bitcoin volatility. So St. Louis Fed president Jim Bullard believes Bitcoin is more comparable to gold than it is to a currency. He pointed out that gold is volatile like Bitcoin, but that it doesn't affect how the Federal Reserve crafts monetary policy. Bullard says the influx of private currencies is just a natural part of currency competition, but that the dollar will eventually win. So, uh, of course, uh, towing the party line, I guess, uh, so to speak, this is the St. Louis Fed President Jim Bullard, of course, backing the U.S. dollar. But, you know, it doesn't look good when major American companies are uh, deciding to ditch some of their dollars uh, to buy Bitcoin as a hedge. We've talked about that in the past. Um, so let's talk about XRP for a second. This from Credible Crypto. Remember that 45 to 50 cent region well we have now flipped it to support this is now the most logical place to expect a bounce slash a continuation pattern to the upside if you think xrp is not dead uh if when we revisit this region odds we see continuation to the upside increases dramatically and so uh this was a tweet uh that he tweeted out on january 10th showing us this same region here Okay, at that time we were in and around the 35 cent level for XRP, coming off this negative news um, from the SEC, kind of hovering in this uh, in the 20s uh, before we started moving upward. And he was talking about this level here, and now credible crypto. I got to give him credit, a very good technical analyst. Now he's saying that that 45 to 50 cent region for XRP is where we're going to have to rebound. And sure enough, look at what we did. Now first, let me show you that this is an inverted head and shoulders pattern, obviously moving to the upside. Uh, so that's the first. First thing we are looking at here on the 30 minute time frame for XRP, but let me put it here on the daily and uh, I'm going to show you guys what he's talking about here. I always tend to do that. Okay, going to bring up a rectangle here and I'm just going to outline that 45 to 50 cent um, zone that he's talking about here. So 45 would bring us to around there. Uh, 50 cents is the top end of the zone. 45 cents, the bottom end of the zone. And uh, you guys can see significant resistance here. Actually, maybe if I put it on the hourly, it'll look a little clearer. Uh, you can see definite resistance being hit here. Uh, we can see that uh, there was consolidation here before that sharp move up. We can also see that zone uh, represents that rebound here off this quick pump. We came back down. We broke through this zone. Obviously, we're trying to make it up to 79 cents came back down and this zone again uh, is going to be the one we look at to see if we're going to continue moving upward okay so there's one time uh, resistance held us back here uh, this was consolidation before this sharp move here we can see this zone is very significant on the XRP chart uh, let me just bring that back on the daily here uh, just to pull that right back out again uh, okay and let me see if I can just uh, get rid of some of this now uh, get rid of that. All right, so you guys can see here on the daily chart, we were coming back down, dipped down, wicked back down in this zone before this green bullish candlestick popped right back up again. This is a significant zone. Credible Crypto isn't the only one talking about this. Uh, Michael at Val5 Links posted this. Okay, this is an article from Coinpedia. The XRP price is the talk of the town since the asset rallied like a monster entering the top three cryptocurrency rankings. Moreover, a group even tried to pump the price but yet their victory remained short-lived, so they're talking about that pump group, obviously. Nevertheless, XRP regained the momentum, and this time initiated a surge without any external factors, and appears to be poised to hit a target very soon. So again, uh, talking about this zone here, coming down, 
and uh, if we get rejected, we will go back down lower for sure, below that 45 cent mark. And uh, you know, if we continue to rally, of course, the upside is uh, what we all want to see. And it's looking positive because Bitcoin obviously rallying to new all time highs, $51,000. So it is looking positive for XRP. Of course, there's the lawsuit as well. I saw this from Mac Attack XRP at the heart of the SEC's case against Ripple, a dispute over legal advice. So this was interesting and uh, I didn't bring it up the other day. I did a video yesterday talking a little bit about um, some dates with regards to this lawsuit, when we could possibly see some news arise. Uh, guys, I'll link it up here in the top right hand corner. Uh, but I didn't talk about this at the heart of the SEC's case against Ripple, a dispute over legal advice. So in 2012, an international law firm wrote two memos for the blockchain company, Ripple and its two top executives, contemplating the launch of XRP, a new cryptocurrency designed to compete with Bitcoin. Ripple wanted to know among other things, whether and under what circumstances XRP could be considered an investment contract uh, subject to federal securities laws. The law firm, whose identity is not publicly known, analyzed that regulatory risk in memos provided to Ripple in February and October. Those memos are now a matter of hot dispute between Ripple and the Securities and Exchange Commission, uh, which sued the blockchain company in December for allegedly conducting an unregistered offering of $1.3 billion in XRP between 2013 and 2020. Among the SEC's allegations, Ripple Ripple's lawyers told the company in those 2012 memos to ask the SEC how to distribute XRP without triggering securities laws, but the company ignored its lawyer's advice. So Ripple, of course, has quite a different take on the 2012 memos, arguing last month uh, in its answer to the SEC complaint that the government had mischaracterized the legal advice in the documents. According to Ripple, any reasonable reader of the memos would conclude that the company's lawyers did not believe its digital tokens were securities under federal law. The company isn't just fighting with the SEC over the contents of the memos. Ripple is also at odds with the government about whether the advice of its counsel back in 2012 is protected by attorney-client privilege. So guys, there's more to this, and it seems to me like it's just getting muckier and muckier. Um, of course, we want this to be a clear-cut case of, can I do this or can I not do this? Um, but this is the law, right? This is how lawsuits ensue. And um, sometimes we kind of just have to sift through the BS before we can get to uh, a point of conclusion. So in the joint letter that was just uh, released on February 15th, uh, U.S. District Judge Annalisa Torres of Manhattan, uh, the SEC said it wants more discovery on the memos, including communications between Ripple executives and the lawyers who advised the company in advance of the first distributions of XRP in 2013. Ripple countered that the documents are shielded by privilege. Uh, yes, the memos were disclosed to third parties in 2013, business discussions, Ripple said, but that was uh, years before the SEC began investigating Ripple's role in the market for XRP. XRP, the company said. Ripple told Judge Torres that it never waived privilege uh, and will oppose any SEC attempt to disclose protected material. So this is going to be interesting. And, um, you know, this article just continues on uh, with a little bit of the history that we all know. So is this going to affect the outcome? Uh, ultimately, I do not think so. We've got Stephen Buldy up here. I think we might not see Ripple versus the SEC settlement anytime soon, though. Gary Gensler will not come on board as SEC chair until June 2021. Now, there is a bit of a timeline for this. Uh, we are eyeing the summer for some sort of clarity, whether that is in June, whether that is in August. Uh, we ultimately don't really know. We can best kind of guess based on uh, information that we're given and also based on uh, other legal professionals' opinions on this. I did a video on uh, Jeremy Hogan's opinion on this, guys. You can uh, catch it up here in the top right-hand corner. But Stephen just pointing this out, William Joseph Burns of Maryland to be director of the Central Intelligence Agency uh, and Gary Gensler of Maryland to be a member of the Security and Exchange Commission for the remaining term uh, expiring June 5th 2021. Gary Gensler of Maryland to be a member of the Security and Exchange Commission for the term expiring June 5th, 2026. So uh, for those of you guys who do not know, Jay Clayton actually left prematurely. I believe it was six months prematurely. So he was supposed to leave in June, uh, but he left in December, of course, with his parting shot at Ripple. And so it's looking as though we're not actually going to see Gary Gensler uh, coming into office until June, uh, which is around the time that some people were predicting XRP could rally end of the second quarter of 2021. So the summer, I think the summer is a safe bet. Uh, meanwhile, this from XRP Crypto Wolf Flair won't be affected by Ripple's legal issues. And I think some of you guys were uh, wondering about this. 
The community-managed Twitter account of Flare enthusiasts dismissed the popular bearish narrative that insists that Flare and Spark tokens would be somehow affected by Ripple and XRP's legal conflict with the SEC. Uh, today, February 16th, a crypto Twitter user named Brad Conway asked the administration and community of Flare networks to clarify the details of FLR token airdrops and their availability on exchanges. Now, Flare community on Twitter, uh, although they do tweet out some great info uh, and have produced some great videos on the Flare network specifically, I do do not believe they are an official entity of the Flare Networks. Put it down in the comments, guys, if I'm making a mistake here, but I believe that uh, Flare Networks here, this is their official Twitter site. So at Flare Networks on Twitter, and uh, this one is at Community Flare here on Twitter. Uh, as covered by you today previously, the US SEC accused Ripple Inc. Uh, and its masterminds, Brad Gar. Okay, right. Now that just gives us some of the same information that we already know about this. Uh, but it is looking like, uh, you know, the people who are researching Flare Networks specifically and the Spark token are saying this will not affect any XRP legal issues as they are separate things. Airdrop to be expected. Late quarter two, May or June. Uh, no second airdrop for XRP holders, but the first airdrop for Flare holders first month after the launch of the Flare networks. So do follow at Community Flare there on Twitter, guys, uh, if you want some more Flare network updates. And finally, this guy's from Bank XRP. The Biden administration definitely looking uh, to new priorities in banking, fintech, and derivative sectors. And so this is all looking good, guys. This is from Gibson Dunn. Okay, they are a law firm. So Gibson Dunn, with more than 1,400 lawyers in 20 offices in major cities throughout the United States, Europe, the Middle East, Asia, and South America, is committed to providing the highest quality legal services to its clients. In Europe, our established internationally networked group of qualified U.S., English, French, Spanish, and German lawyers have considerable experience in representing clients with international business interests that require a coordinated and seamless response within and across European national borders. And this is what they had to say about uh, digital assets and cryptocurrencies with regards to uh, the Biden administration, specifically how President Biden staffs and heads these three regulatory agencies, the SEC, the OCC, and the CFTC, may have significant effects on the regulation of digital assets and cryptocurrencies. Uh, Gary Gensler, nominated to head the SEC and the former chair of the CFTC, is now a senior faculty advisor to the Digital Currency Initiative at MIT's Sloan School of Management, where he teaches classes on blockchain tech and digital currency. Uh, Michael Barr, who we've talked about in the past, guys, I did a video on that. I'll link it up here. A treasury official in both the Clinton and Obama administrations has been identified as a leading candidate to head the OCC, and he has a connection to Ripple. Mr. Barr has served as an advisor to Ripple on Lending Club's board and on the FinTech Advisory Council for the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Hmm, go figure. Uh, down here, each of these agencies will have important digital assets and cryptocurrency issues on its agenda. Just to end the Trump administration, the SEC brought an enforcement action against Ripple. It's interesting that, uh, you know, this is this just has to do with digital assets and cryptocurrencies as a general. This law firm here, Gibson Dunn, talking about that with respect to these new nominees, and they mention Ripple specifically in this document because this seems to me like the most pressing thing that's on everybody's mind right now for US regulatory clarity with cryptocurrencies. So the SEC brought on an enforcement action against Ripple Labs and two of its executives uh, on the ground of the sales of uh, XRP, of course, was an unregistered security offering. These guys go on to say a Gensler-led SEC will need to decide whether to continue this action, whether to provide guidance on which digital tokens are securities, and whether digital asset exchanges have to register as national securities exchanges or alternative trading systems. Although Mr. Gensler has espoused openness to helping digital assets and cryptocurrencies reach their real potential in the world of finance, uh, even if doing so requires tailoring some of the rules and regulations to their ecosystem, he has also taken the view that 100 to 200 exchanges are basically operating outside of U.S. law. So not a small feat, although Gibson Dunn uh, just outlining what is happening in the United States with regards to cryptocurrency does mention Ripple's lawsuit specifically, clearly a hot topic in the sector. Gary Gensler's on the docket come June to make some real big decisions about this. XRP hodlers still keeping their fingers crossed Although, you know, in this crypto bull run, I don't see us losing, guys. We have bounced out of this 45 to 50 cent range. Let me just put that back on the hourly and we can see XRP continuing to rally up now. That next level is 79 to 80 cents. Can we do it? Tell me down in the comments what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel. I guess I should take this time to say 70,000 subscribers, guys. We're doing great. Please subscribe to the channel. I'm giving away two Ledger Nanos. And if you are subscribed, we need to reach 70,000 by March 31st. You are eligible to win a Ledger Nano S or 
X. And please do like the videos. It's a free way to support the channel. I always love hearing what you guys have to say, so put a comment down there too. I'll see you in the next one, guys.